back. I'm Adam Rosen. Thanks for tuning in. Today, um, I'm just going to preface, I don't have the answers for you. Um, if the question is, you know, am I allergic to metal and should I have a knee replacement? The honest answer is I don't know, but I do want to share some information with you that hopefully will help you and maybe answer some of the questions that you do have and at least offer you the ability to have a good set of questions that you can discuss with your surgeon. Because like it or not, um, you know, in our world, even in the orthopedic community, uh, there's a lot of back and forth of, you know, whether or not metal allergy is real. Um, is it, you know, not real? Does it cause symptoms? Does it not cause symptoms? And the data is mixed. Um, but the reality is that people have pain. The problem is that most studies have shown, and the numbers that are quoted all the time, is that 20% of people that have total knee replacements will have pain. So if you have pain, is that normal after a knee replacement, or is there a cause? I mean, the reality may be that 20% of the time, we're just not smart enough to come up with the reason as to why somebody hurts. Maybe it's an infection, they're oversized, they're unstable, maybe it is metal allergy. Uh, we looked at a bunch of patients years ago, and it was interesting. It's a little confusing, um, but think of this as four groups. There was a group of people um, that did not claim they had any metal sensitivities and a group of people that did. So that's two groups. And in each of those groups, some of those patients got normal metal cobalt chrome implants, and the other persons had sort of nickel reduced or what they're called sort of metal friendly knee replacements. And the same thing in the other group. And what was interesting is that when you look at range of motion and function and pain, each group was the same. So it may lead you to believe that, you know, maybe metal sensitivity or metal allergy doesn't cause any effects in a knee replacement. Um, but maybe some of the people that did have metal sensitivities and had pain, it was because of the cobalt or chrome or nickel. And maybe some of the people that didn't have metal sensitivities, maybe they did um, and just didn't know it. And maybe that was the cause of pain. But honestly, we don't know. So when patients come and they ask, you know, should I see an allergist? And that's pretty well now known is that if you do not have a history, it is not recommended to just routine test everybody um, because the dermatologist and allergist will tell you if you react on your skin, there is no data science or, you know, understanding that that skin reaction will also cause an internal reaction. Uh, and there's also a belief or understanding that the metal reaction that people get in a knee replacement is what we call type 4 reaction or delayed type hypersensitivity, meaning you don't put it in and have pain right away. It takes some time to develop some reaction to this foreign body. And there's another test um, that's called the LTT. Um, and everyone says the LTT test, but it's actually LTT. So it's lymphocytic um, transformation test. And there's a few different variations that have developed since then. And it's not widely used. Um, it is expensive. Uh, and it's not widely available. And you have to send the, the bloods in. So if the blood gets sent, there can be some degradations of these T cells they have to look at. Uh, but even when people react, uh, it's not super specific and there may be some people that do have reactions that the test doesn't pick up but there has been some studies and some data that shows it may be helpful sort of in this this workup phase if that is on the differential so you know the real question i think people have is what about implants you know is there do i have to have metal and in america the answer is yes there is not a knee replacement currently that i'm aware of in the united states that is not made of metal. There is a ceramic total knee. Um, there have been some studies done in other countries, specifically in Europe, where they've looked at these ceramic knees. Uh, the FDA so far has not approved it. There is some concern or fear of the brittleness of this knee uh, and a fall, which could result in a fracture. Um, but there are metal knee replacements. Now, there are different types of metal. So the most common metal that people um, are allergic to or react to or have a sensitivity to is nickel. And most knee replacements do have nickel because they're made of cobalt chrome. Um, there can be a cobalt chrome thigh bone part and a cobalt chrome shin bone part. A lot of companies have a cobalt chrome thigh bone part and a titanium shin bone part. You can use an all plastic shin bone part. So that's another way of getting rid of some of the metal, but it's different than hips. And this is where I think there's a lot of misunderstanding that people here 
cobalt chrome is bad, metal is bad. And the metal that people usually are referring to is what occurred in hip replacements or hip resurfacing. So this was a metal surface that rubbed on a metal surface. It was a metal ball made of cobalt chrome rubbing on a cup made of cobalt chrome. And that led to debris of cobalt and chromium, which caused lots of problems and led to a lot of failures. Now, in a knee replacement, there is no point where a metal is supposed to be rubbing on metal. You have a metal fibrillin part that rubs or articulates on a plastic insert. And the plastic insert is on the shin bone, or it can be attached to metal, which is on the shin bone. So you have a sandwich of metal, plastic, metal. But there's no point where metal is rubbing on metal. When you talk about cobalt and chrome, cobalt and chrome is a very strong material, but it does have nickel in it. Some people may react to cobalt and chromium. It is more rare than reactions to nickel, um, but it can happen. So there's a few options that are available. Um, there is a, one company called Smith & Nephew, which has their oxinium knee, this oxidized zirconium. Um, it is not nickel-free, 100%. Um, and I, I looked it up just to be sure. They quote, it's less than 0.0035% nickel. So it does have some nickel in it, um, but it has been the go-to for a long time for a lot of surgeons. And when they had patients that were concerned about sensitivity specifically to nickel, this was sort of the go-to. Uh, there's another company uh, that I'm aware of in Europe um, called Ascolap. And Ascolap has a technology called AST or Advanced Surface Technology. So this is a multi-layer step process. So inside that is a cobalt chrome component, but it has these layers, which is supposed to prevent 99.9% .9 leaching of any of the cobalt chromium or nickel. Uh, some newer companies, um, not newer companies, but companies have produced newer designs. Uh, there's one, it's Tynadium, um, which is made by Zimmer Biomet. Uh, and this device contains no nickel, no cobalt, no chromium. So companies are starting to come out with these products um, with the understanding um, that people are concerned, but also with the understanding of we still don't really have an answer to understand, like, are you sensitive? If you reacted to earrings or jewelry, um, what caused the reaction? And will that cause a reaction inside your body? But I always tell people, like, when we have this discussion, um, it's not as easy as taking off your earrings or taking off your bracelet. And, you know, we don't put your knee in and keep the parts in a, in a, in a refrigerator. So if you don't like it, we can put it back in. So you want to be careful and you want to be sure. So I would say if there are concerns um, for you about metals, have the discussion with your doctor. Um, I know some doctors, you know, if they're really comfortable with one implant company and their implant company doesn't make an implant um, that is, uh, hypoallergenic, because um, they're not all necessarily nickel-free, um, that they may refer you to one of their partners or somebody else. Um, there are some doctors that may say, you know, I, I don't believe this is going to cause a reaction in you. We can go ahead with this. So uh, that's a discussion that you have to have with your doctor as to what your concerns are, what your fears are, what the risks are, um, and then what is the best implant uh, and should you have a knee replacement, you know, before you walk down that test, and you can talk to your doctor too about whether or not, again, there's not routine testing for everybody, but I do have some patients that have had histories of multiple reactions with different stuff. And for that reason, you know, they've requested or I've recommended that they see an allergist and get testing. But the reality is that if they have a history and they get tested and the testing's negative, we're still going to use one of these, you know, hypoallergenic knees. Um, and not just believe 100% faith in the testing. So that's why I tell people, you can get tested, but if you're concerned and there is any concern or risk of some type of metal reaction, is it going to cause a reaction in your knee? Again, I do not know. Um, but I have an implant or implants that we can use that will be lower risk of having a metal reaction, and we can go ahead with that. And, you know, I always tell patients, it's not that you're getting a lesser implant. It's not that this implant is less than that. There are some concerns about scratching though, and that's been the one downside where some of these implants, if they do develop scratches in wear simulation testing, have shown accelerated wear of the plastic. Um, so there is that slight downside, but there haven't been studies of catastrophic failures of these implants. It's just a trade-off of, you know, what's the risk of your reaction to the metal? Cobalt, chromium, nickel. You know, what's the risk of increased wear if you were to develop a scratch in the years to come? But again, 
information, um, hopefully to make you more educated, but to give you a idea of what questions that you may ask your surgeon if you are concerned about metal and you are looking to go through with a knee replacement in the near future. So thanks again for listening. Um, I'll put in the show notes um, some of these things that we talked about and some links to some recent studies. So at least you can see um, what options are out there and some of the more recent studies and then have a good, you know, thorough dive into some of the good data. So you'll have some good understanding and good questions when you have the talk with your surgeon. Uh, Thanks again for listening. I'm Adam Rosen. Until next time, stay safe.